There have always been people for hundreds and hundreds of years who have bought things they shouldn't have bought because they can't afford it. And that's not a new thing. But when it's happened in the past, it hasn't caused a calamity or a crash the way this has. And if you remember after the crash right away, they started to blame people who were in homes they shouldn't be in. And mostly they were referring to black people who were getting these subprime loans, right? Um, as it turned out, Bill Black is correct, what he says in the film. 80% of this mortgage problem is caused by the banks. It's fraud committed by the banks and the lending institutions, not the people who were there you know, to get something they couldn't afford and, and end up you know, trying not to pay the bank, the mortgage. I don't want to blame the victim here. I, I just, I really want all of us to, um, you know, people have asked me, well, what did the hackers do to deserve that? Well, I, my point is, nobody who's had their home in their family for four decades should be thrown out of their home. I mean, that's just, there's got to be, if, let's say they, let's say they just purposely didn't want to pay their mortgage payment every month. Well, garnish their wages. If they don't have wages, well, then we should be against any poor person being thrown out of their home. It's absolutely wrong, immoral, shouldn't happen. But let's not blame the victim here. I don't want to know. I don't really care. I don't care how short his skirt was when he was raped. It's irrelevant. Don't blame the victim. We wouldn't do that in any other crime, would we? Well, what were you doing in that neighborhood? <laughs> Yo, you didn't lock your door. Well, that doesn't mean that then the person who came in and stole everything out of my house had a right to do that. I'm not, it's not my fault that I forgot to lock the door. So I don't care about any of that. I want, I want an end to this. If somebody's trying to screw over the bank, there's ways to deal with them to get their money if they're purposely just trying to hang on to their money and not pay the bank. But that's not the case. And the truth is, is that the number one cause of foreclosures in this country and the number one cause of bankruptcies is medical bills. Medical bills, the number one reason. If we had universal health care, it would, it would so bring down the foreclosure problem that we have right now. But none of this gets discussed, does it? This whole year after the crash, how often have we heard people say that on op-ed pages or the, the gab fests that are on TV? Yes, who's got the next one? Yes, right here. Yes, ma'am. Hi. I particularly enjoyed the scenes with the senators speaking so frankly about the, their disgust with the bailout. I was wondering if it was difficult to get them to... Was it difficult to get the members of Congress to go on camera with me? No, if you remember in Fahrenheit, they ran from me. <laughs> but, um, but that's because I was only in the minority, the, you know, the 30% who was opposed to the war and, and Bush. Now that the majority of the country votes the way I vote, I'm not as scary a person. I mean, actually, they kind of maybe want to talk to me and it might uh, be helpful even. So, so no, I don't get that problem with politicians as much uh, anymore. Marcy Kaptur is the congresswoman from Toledo, Ohio. Um, I didn't even, I had no idea who she was. I was just watching C-SPAN one day and there she was calling them criminals and, uh, <laughs> you know, dom domestic enemies. And, uh, and she's from Toledo, it's like bordering Michigan. I, even have, I have no idea who she was. Now it's like, you know, I want her, I want her to be the first female president in 2016. You know, it's like. <laughs> okay. Yes, next one. We have time for one, this gentleman, one more, so go ahead. Michael, we love you. Um, you know, well, thank you, uh, but I love this town. I mean, seriously, I, I think, uh, you know, with, with all of its problems, uh, you, I, because I've traveled enough, you really do live in one of the better places. And I've often thought that if I didn't live in Michigan, I, I would live here. Um, and there's only two or three other cities I would say that about. But, but here especially, just because I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm already used to the weather. <laughs> and it's like you're, like, you're like Michigan, but without the bullshit. You know, it's kind of like... This is, I don't know, you're just a little friendlier here. And... Uh, you know, maybe it's because your whole state touches Canada and we've got too much water uh, <laughs> in our touching of Canada. So it gets filtered, all the kindness, niceness, socialized medicine, all that stuff. So, um, but you know, and things are getting better here politically too. So um, I hope that I hope that continues. Anyways, what's your question? Sure. Uh, due to the subject matter of your, of your movie, did you have some challenges with distribution? Due to the subject matter of the movie, did I have challenges with distribution? <clears throat> yes. I can't say a whole lot out loud right now. Let me say this, because you know what, it's late, right? 
everybody's still at the ball game. <laughs> There's no press here. Uh, just the guy, where's the guy from Fox? Oh. <laughs> yeah, but this is local Fox, right? You're good. You're good Fox. Okay. Yeah. No. Hey, we know. We watch The Simpsons. Okay. <laughs> the most left-wing show on television. Uh, <laughs> um, I uh, listen. Um, without boring you with all the gory details, I have difficulty with every one of my films. It is a struggle that I wouldn't put any of you through. Um, or even my worst enemy, and it really wears me down, and it takes a lot out of me. When I say, I, you know, I'm not going to do this anymore <laughs> unless like, I get some help, some other people doing these things and stuff, because I, I, it, it, um, I mean, I knew nobody would give me the money to make this movie, so I went to the studio and, and told them it was going to be a sequel to Fahrenheit 9-11, because they love sequels. <laughs> if you just say the word sequel... And it's the largest grossing documentary of all time, and worldwide brought in a half a billion dollars to the studio. You know, it's like, if I just say I'm going to do a sequel to that, it's just, there you go, they write the check. Uh, once they figured out what I was up to, you know, I, just, I don't want to go too far with this, but uh, because they still, I've got, still got to get them into, get into theaters. And I blabbed too much last time with Sicko, like a week or so before, um, its distribution, and they were going to put it in a thousand screens to open with, and they opened it on 400. Um, so just know that I'm out there fighting the fight to get this information out to people. It is not easy, and I need each of you in here tonight to be uh, the foot soldiers <laughs> in my army <laughs> to leave this theater if you liked the film, and please tell 10 or 20 other people to go see this when it opens and go on opening weekend because that's how they determine whether or not they're going to put it in more theaters how it does that first weekend so go on october 2nd go see this movie tell people to see this movie um, i'm really hoping this movie will have a huge impact and will inspire people to get involved and don't sit back we've we've got this great window right now where we're in charge but we've got to make the people that are supposed to be representing us do this there's a famous story of franklin roosevelt a couple years after he was in, a woman comes up to him and she goes, hey, where's our Social Security? It hadn't passed yet. You, you promised well, promise the Social Security. Where is it? He goes, I'm not going to get you Social Security. You're going to have to make me do it. That's what he said. You're going to have to make me do it because I got the banks against me. I got the corporations against me. I've got the Republican Party against me. I can't do this alone. So you, the American people, are going to have to make me and Congress do this. And they did. They did. They came out and and... I'm telling you know I just somebody was asking me here earlier on the um, uh, one of the media people you know well, now what are you gonna do with Bush gone you know when you're out of a job <laughs> and I, was like, I said are you kidding me I said I w I have prayed for this day I this I will thrive during the Obama era as will other artists and and filmmakers and writers this is a great just like during Roosevelt once Roosevelt was in there that's when we got Will Rogers Frank Capra Preston Sturgis John Steinbeck, John Ford making the film from John Steinbeck's book. All that great art and creativity. And they wrote and they did they did stories about the people. The little guy, John Doe, right? Um, all the way through up at the, you know, at two years after World War, year after World War II. It's a wonderful life. All that stuff came out of that era. And that was the contribution that filmmakers made. That's what I'm going to do. I hope to do in these next four years, films that will inspire and stimulate and anger and whatever people to leave the theater and ask the ushers, could you please direct me to the pitchforks and the torches? I don't want any more Twizzlers or Goobers.